Hello, everyone. Welcome again to another Word for Today with Ray. Just so grateful that you're with me again today, and I pray that this time of your studying and listening to the Word of God is helping you to grow in your faith. It's challenging you to allow the Lord to do some work inside you, just the way it is me. Every time I go through these, it's as though I'm hearing directly from Him, and I pray the same for you. Let's go to Him in prayer and ask Him to bless our time together. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for your word. There are times where it's very convicting. There's times where it's encouraging. There's times where it's instructive. And Lord, we want to be a blessing to you. We want our lives to please you. So we ask you to guide us into all truth by your Holy Spirit today. And Lord, that you will help us to live according to that truth so that we'll be examples in this world and that we'll bring great pleasure to you. We bless you and we thank you for your word again in Jesus' name. Amen. The title to today's lesson is Not Run or Labored in Vain. It's taken from the book of Philippians chapter 2 and verse 16. The Philippian church was challenged by Paul to be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom they shined as lights in the world. He knew that others would be watching their behavior. And by their actions, attitudes, and words, they would be a witness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In chapter 2 and verse 16 of Paul's letter to the Philippians, he continued to exhort them so his efforts would not be in vain. We read, Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. The verse begins, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ. Paul begins this exhortation with the phrase, holding forth, which means to have or hold upon, apply, to observe, attend to, or give attention to the word of life, or the word that brings life. In other words, they were to give attention to the gospel of Jesus Christ, which they believed. Paul's reason was that I may rejoice in the day of Christ. If the Philippians would keep the word of life, Paul could rejoice with them in the day of Christ, where everyone who believes in him will be brought together in a time of celebration. The verse goes on to say that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. If we use our imaginations, we can almost see Paul the apostle wondering if all his efforts toward the Philippians would be in vain, which means empty, void of truth, containing nothing and with no purpose. Paul had run. Paul had labored. And the goal was to have the people in Philippi to know and live the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was concerned after all his efforts toward them that they would somehow fall astray and not keep the gospel and make void all the energies he poured into them. No doubt he would rather rejoice with them in the day of Christ than to grieve over them leaving the gospel they believed. Have we ever labored with someone and wondered if all our labor was in vain? Have we expended ourselves, cost ourselves, and poured out ourselves toward them only to wonder if our efforts would come up empty, void of truth, and containing nothing? As we think about Paul's words, perhaps we may put ourselves in his place and feel his desire to rejoice in the day of Christ over those to whom we have extended ourselves and the gospel. And may the Lord help us not to faint along the way if we discover that some of our running and laboring has been in vain. Next time, Paul tells the Philippians how he views his sacrifice for them. So read ahead and we shall join together then. Until tomorrow, there is more. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace as you continue to study his word in Jesus' name.